Louis Riel, a comic strip biography, is a graphic novel that talks about Louis Riel, a revolutionary Metis French Canadian. This, this book starts with Louis Riel creating a small provincial government and militia to protect against the Hudson Bay's company claim of owning land that his ancestors had lived on for decades and their plan to sell the land to Canada. During this time, he imprisoned a couple of members of his community who had taken arms against him to oppose his ideals. One of the people he imprisoned was a man named Thomas Scott, who had gone into the heads of everyone in the area because of endless profanities and screaming. Because of this, he was sentenced to death for treason against the Exovidae, which was the name of his small government. Scott's death put Canada into an uproar, making Luriel public enemy number one in the eyes of most English-speaking Canadians. This caused a huge amount of problems for Luriel, eventually leading to a five-year exile from Canada. While he was exiled from Canada, his dismantled government was enraged by constant shutdowns from the Canadian government. This included forcing them to wait three years for permits on land that they had lived on for decades and surveyors that changed how their farms had to be set up, completely disrupting the community. Because of this, Louis Riel decided to leave the U.S. preemptively, entering Canada before his exile had been completed. Once he got back to the Red River Settlement, which is where he had he grew up, he brought back the Exovidate and created more disruptions in the Canadian populace. Because of this, the Canadian government put a bounty on Riel's head. They then sent the RCMP to capture him. While he tried to fight back, it ended up sentenced to death for the murder of Scott and for treason against Canada. In the beginning, Lou Riel was like any other man in his community with the only difference being his skill at speaking English and political knowledge. There was nothing very special about him, and this set the stage for character development later in the book. The reason I think he started out at this sort of blank slate was that the author, Chester Brown, probably thought that it was more reasonable to have no preconceived character flaws or traits so that he could portray Louis Riel in a new light, giving more thought to how he sees Riel and not how other people view him. Because of Luriel's want to help the community, over time, he began to lead the forefront of the uprising against the discrimination of Métis French Canadians. This also connects to one of the main themes of this book, that being solving inequalities. This part of his character, Delvelna, is crucial to the story, because it paves the way for all other sorts of flaws to show up and make him seem more human and helps connect him to the reader more. Because of his new position as a leader in his community, it forces a lot more stress on him, and he ends up having to choose between helping to solve inequalities or his family. He ends up deciding that the inequalities need his attention, and this creates a split in his life that ends up being the catalyst for what his character at the end of the book will look like. Because he has nothing else to focus on, he becomes extremely dedicated to his cause, and rises up even higher, taking on jobs such as joining the House of Commons to represent his community, going out to talk to other Metis tribes, and even preparing a militia in case of danger. Because of the stress all these jobs he's taking on, he becomes much more fervent and focused on his task. So much so that he starts oppressing people that are not Metis in his community, basically reversing his role and becoming the opposer. This is an interesting development, because it shows that he's almost going against the main theme of the book, and is in some ways turning from a protagonist to an antagonist leaving the book with no real horrors, heroes at this stage. After turning into an antagonist of sorts, it takes a turn for the worse as he becomes to see his work as God's work, making him believe he is a messiah. This is shown in multiple ways, but one way that portrays this greatly is when he starts bringing religion into not only his work style, but his work itself and everyone allied with him. This causes the whole group to turn into more of a militia and degrades completely from its original peaceful and law-abiding self. This creates a twist in the main theme, showing how the original oppressed Metis French Canadians turned into oppressors themselves, showing that power, stress, and hardship have a lot to do with what you will end up using power for in the future. In the end, his character changed from someone who just wanted to help his community and right wrongs he saw, to someone whose mind was only focused on his cause and blinded him for the consequences of his actions. This page touches on a couple of different parts in the story. But the main one is Lou Riel's return to Canada before his five-year exile is complete. This is important because it creates even more disruptions in Canada, and eventually causes the government to send the RCMP to capture him, which leads to his death. This page touches on a couple of important graphic elements. But first, let's talk about speech bubbles. In panel 4, it shows Lou Riel screaming about the pages of his book flying everywhere. The author uses speech bubbles to make it look like he is screaming by having the bubble be jagged and the letters in bold. 
This allows the reader to easily identify this is a loud message, which once taken into context what is happening in the scene, allows you to figure out what he is angry about and why. This page touches mainly on the element of fiction, character. This is shown when he explains what his book is about. Lou Riel says, yes, I've been writing a book in which I set out my philosophy. This is important to Lou Riel's character because it shows that he's becoming more and more determined to let the world know how he feels. Another way his character develops here is something you can realize when you look at past and future pages that talk specifically more about his philosophy. One thing he believes is that God has picked him as the world's prophet and that it is his job to help the Metis French get away from the oppression they're facing. This shows that he is becoming much bolder in his statements and much more erratic in a sense.